Hello, dear family. As I promised, the second part of the story is already here. I'm sure you'll be re-listening to both parts whenever you want to lift your spirits. I don't want to keep you for long, so let's get started. Quick recap for some of you, who already forgot what was the first part about. Our op and Carly are working on a revenge plan. Carly is his ex-wife's affairs wife that he is falling in love with. We love Carly. So. As I told you I was a badass and have been for a year. I worked out and kept myself in good physical shape. I had to I've been around a lot of friends that were of a questionable nature. To be frank about them, they were pimps and prostitutes. I was their investment broker. Together we made a lot of money. They made the bucks and I invested it for them. Yes, I did make it with a few of the hookers. Believe it or not some of them were really nice people. Of course others weren't so nice. Luckily I knew which were which. They really were good to have as friends. They brought a lot of business my way, just because I didn't belittle them. I might not have agreed with their lifestyle, but they were people too. I gave one of my pimp friends a call and asked him for a favor. When I got done explaining it to him, he laughed out loud and said, Man, you are one bad mother ducker. You know it's going to cost you, no freebies in this world. I told him, no problem, Big Louie, as long as it's done right. There might even be a bonus in it for you. Good deal my plan is finally starting to come together. Carly and I got together one evening to plan our sting operation. She was worried that I might still want to take her in public, and it was against everything she believed in. She really was a special woman of good character. I promised her with God as my witness that I would never hurt or embarrass her in any way. She just gave me her patented smile that could melt ice and said, I think I'm falling for you big time. Just thought you should know. I asked her to take the next couple of days off as vacation, sick days or leave. It didn't make any difference, except we only had a couple days to set up this sting operation. It had to work like clockwork to succeed. Well, what's the plan Kevin? How are you going to get revenge and not use me? What do you need me to do? First stop asking so many questions, as I smiled at her. Now next Wednesday you say they have room 109 booked. Is that correct? Yes, they have it reserved until 10 in the evening. They seem to always reserve the same room and always for about 5 hours. Not the best of motels, but they need to rent it by the hour. Funny, the way Jim made love to me he could have rented it for 15 minutes and saved a lot of money. Okay, now tomorrow I going to reserve the same room for Wednesday morning. I am going to be setting up a remote operated VCR. While I'm doing that you need to go see my lawyer. Sally Hawk is the best damn, take no prisoners lawyer out there. Here's what you want written up. It's going to be your divorce decree, stating that you want a divorce under these circumstances. Then Wednesday night you will have to get Jim's signature on it. How do you know he'll sign it Kevin? What if he says, no? What will I do? Don't worry, Carly, I'm almost positive he'll sign it. The consequences are too great. Do you want me to tell you the whole plan or do you want to wait and be surprised? My god, Kevin, you're making me a nervous wreck. I don't think I could wait to find out anything. You seem so excited and it's rubbing off on me. The only thing I want rubbing on you is me. You're so very special to me that I want you as much as this revenge. We will get the revenge. It's for both of us. Then I just hope you feel the same about me as I do about you. Then my revenge will be complete. Are we going to completely ruin their lives Kevin? I don't feel real good about that. I just kind of want to get even. We are going to put their lives in turmoil, but their lives will go on. Unless they are foolish enough not to sign your divorce papers. Okay, sweetheart, here's the plan. They usually meet between 5-6 o'clock. Since Jim usually gets there about a half hour before Rachel we are going to do a job on him. I have my friend, Big Louie, stopping by to pay Jim a visit. He will have Sally and Sue with him. They are prostitutes who are not working at the present due to a bad case of syphilis. I'm paying them to have unprotected sex with Jim. Both of them. Big Louie is there to make sure he takes care of his women. The last thing that Jim would want to do is cross Big Louie. How do you know these people Kevin? They're my clients. They bring in a lot of money and I help them invest it. Of course, when Rachel shows up she can have a choice. Duck her lover Jim or Big Louie will get his rocks off. Now during all these sex acts you and I will be sitting in the van running the remote control. Then when the time is right. You will walk in, catch them in the act and ask for a divorce. Then you will walk over to the closet and give Jim a choice. Sign the divorce papers or you will leave with the tape, and you will send a copy to his employers and to the company's home office. The choice is his. 
Then after his choice is made, you come back to the van. Big Louie will be there to protect you from any harm. He will not leave until after you go. Well, what do you think Carly? Is it a go? She smiled at me and said, You're doing this more for me than for yourself, aren't you? God, you know there is another side of you, and I'm beginning to like it very much. It's a go. Over the next couple of days we set everything up. Carly saw Sally Hawk, our lawyer, who said she wanted to be there herself to serve Jim with the divorce papers. There was no doubt she would have his signature on the legal document. She was the most well-known divorce lawyer in the state. Sally said that this was such a cool plan, and that we have sent her a lot of business over the years. She was a good friend and just wanted to be an honest thing. Big Louie was ready. We paid him in advance and told him he'd get an extra 500 if all went well. He just smiled and said, no problem. I went over to the motel and rented the room for the afternoon on Wednesday. The desk clerk said I had to be out by 4 p.m. because this room was already rented. I met up with Carly, and we went to a really nice restaurant to have lunch. Lo and behold there was my ex-sister-in-law having lunch with some guy who wasn't her husband. I told Carly who it was and she asked if it would hurt our plans any. I told her that the man with Karen was not her husband, and seeing she didn't know Carly we could enjoy our lunch. When Karen saw me, she was horrified. Caught in the act so to speak. I could see she was extremely nervous and was wondering who I was with. Carly looked great, bloops sticking out, no bra, her skirt about 4 inches above her knee. Carly caught on real quick. She moved into the seat next to me instead of across from me. She then turned my face toward her and kissed me. She put everything into that kiss. Not only was Karen watching, but so was everyone who could see us. Carly pulled back and smiled saying, think that got anyone's attention. Then she kissed my open mouth again. She stopped when the waiter was making some strange noises. I looked at the waiter and said, she is one beautiful woman, isn't she? He replied, yes, she is sir. She belongs to me, don't you, sweetheart? As I looked at her. Only you baby. I belong only to you, she smiled. God, I hoped it was true, but I knew she was putting on this show, so my ex-sister-in-law would have something to say to Rachel. Karen never did come over to see us. Geez, I wonder why. Carly and I finished up our lunch and then headed out the door. We went to the electronics store and picked up the equipment we needed. As we were checking out she said the kiss in the restaurant was for real. She said she meant it even though she did do it to spite my ex-sister-in-law. Wednesday morning came. Carly and I were both on edge. Any sting operation puts the nerves on edge. Every detail had to be timed and done right. Not much room for error. Carly met with Sally to make sure the divorce papers were in order. I went to the motel room and set up the video equipment. I parked the rented van just around the side of the building, so it wouldn't be conspicuous that evening. I went with Carly to see Big Louie. When he saw Carly, he about shit himself. Geez, man, who's the baby doll? He asked. I looked at him and introduced Carly. I know she was nervous, but Big Louie had a tendency to affect people that way, weighing in at about 320 pounds, blacker than the ace of spades, but he was a really smart guy. He had a master's degree in business. His net worth was in the millions. I know because I was his finance broker. He could see she was nervous and told her, don't worry, little lady. No one's going to hurt you. Kevin's my friend and I respect the man. I'll see to it you're protected. No one is going to hurt you. She felt a little better and thanked him for his kindness. Louis said he and his girls would show up around 5.15 p.m. He wanted to give Jim a few minutes to get organized. Earlier in the day Carly applied some of her computer expertise. She sent an email to both Jim and Rachel, saying the note was from the other. It read. Sweetheart, I have a very special treat for you tonight. Please, when you arrive, don't ask any questions. I know you will be surprised. Just go along. Also, to make it extra special, let's not communicate the rest of this day. I want this to be a night that you will always remember. Love you. Me. It was now 4.45 p.m. Carly and I got into our van and waited. At exactly 5 p.m. Jim arrived and went into the room. We were very nervous. This was a big undertaking for us. At 5.15 p.m. we watched as Big Louie approached the room with Sally and Sue. As they knocked on the door we turned on our cameras. We didn't want to start the tape until the action got underway. We had two cameras running. One from above the lights and the other from inside the smoke alarm. It was unbelievable the quality of picture from a pinhole camera. I had to remember to return tomorrow and retrieve my cameras. 
Carly and I were nervous as hell as Big Louie knocked on the door. As he opened the door we heard Jim say, who are you? Louie explained, I was paid to bring two of my women to this room for some sexual excitement. Jim said, there must be some mistake. Then Louie asked, do you have a problem having fun with my ladies, buddy? Are you Jim Nelson? Jim replied he was but didn't expect company. Louie told him that they were paid in advance to come to that room and have sex with the occupants. Louie told him they weren't a charity and were not returning any money. Then he pushed his way in and told his girls to help Jim off with his clothes. We started the tapes. Jim was nervous, you could see it on the tape. He thought this was the surprise that Rachel had for him, since he had gotten the email earlier, so he went along and removed his clothes. A little information about Sally and Sue. Sally was black and Sue was Caucasian. They really were good looking women even though they were hookers. They were good at what they did. Of course the only problem was at that time they had syphilis, and it could be passed along very easily through contact. These gals had Jim lying naked on the bed and were rubbing his body all over. Big Louie just sat back in a big chair and watched. The girls were good. Carly was watching through a remote. She was both sad and glad at the same time. Sad that her husband of five years chose to cheat on her, while at the same time glad that her revenge had started. There was a knock on the door, and Big Louie opened it to see Rachel standing there. He told her to come in. She asked what was going on when she saw her boyfriend Jim laying on the bed with a black woman. As she entered the room she didn't know what to think. All she knew was that Jim had sent her an email saying something special was going to happen that night. As she entered the room Big Louie told her to disrupt. She was scared, looking at this big black man telling her what to do. He told her he had no intention of touching her. He was just there to protect his girls. Sue looked at Rachel and told her that they didn't have all night, and to hurry and get her clothes off. Jim just lay on his back while Sally continued to ride. Not knowing exactly what to do Rachel, started to disrupt. Sue sat Rachel on the end of the bed, then got in front of her and planted her mouth onto Rachel's flower. Rachel screamed out. It was cool as hell to watch, except for knowing that Sue was loaded with syphilis. The cameras were catching everything. The sound and the video. There was a knock on our van door. It was Sally Hawk, our lawyer. She asked how it was going and then glanced at the monitor. The hookers Sally and Sue were back in their vehicle waiting for Big Louie. They did their job well. Big Louie waited outside the door to protect Carly and Sally Hawk in case they needed him. Both Carly and Sally approached the door. Carly was first to enter the room. You goddamn son of a bitch. You worthless piece of shit. You goddamn cheating ducker. Carly used every swear word she ever learned. I want a divorce and I want it now. Jim and Rachel stopped ducking to see Carly in the doorway yelling at them. They knew they were caught red-handed. There was no way they could explain their way out of this one. Carly continued to speak. Why, Jim, why wasn't I good enough for you that you hooked up with this? I knew you were having an affair. I had hoped you would have gotten it out of your system, but no, you continued and continued it. I have had enough. I want a divorce and I want it as soon as possible. Then Sally Hawk walked in. Jim, this is my lawyer, Sally Hawk. She will tell you the terms of the divorce decree. I expect to get the divorce started tonight so I can have you out of my life as soon as possible, and you can have your girlfriend. Both Jim and Rachel got out of the bed and started getting dressed. I'm Sally Hawk, Carly's lawyer. The terms of the divorce are very simple and very clear. 1. Carly will go home tonight and will have 24 hours to gather whatever belongings she wants. You will not be there tonight. After 24 hours she will never return to the premises. It's an apartment rental in your name so you can have it. 2. You will be responsible for all bills due before today's date. That includes all credit cards that are held in your name or held jointly by both of you. Carly will give you all joint cards tonight, and she will never use them again. She will be responsible for any cards in her name only. 3. You each have your own car, and each will be responsible for your own vehicle's insurance and payment as well as upkeep. 4. Lastly your savings account with a balance of $8,000 will go to Carly. She will withdraw the money from the account tomorrow. You have a 401k that has over $80,000 in it. Carly's has one with $15,000 in it. You will both be able to keep your own 401ks. If you agree to these terms you will have to sign the decree tonight. It is irrevocable. Neither of you will be able to make any changes after it is signed. Carly has already signed it. Just sign it on the line that says husband. 
Sally handed him the document to look over and sign. Rachel sat there and looked on. Jim said, what if I don't sign it tonight? What are you going to do? Sally said, that document you are holding will be voided in five minutes when I leave. Then we will go to court and ask for the same benefits, except we will make sure we get half of your 401k also. This is a good deal for you. I would advise you to take it. Carly walked over to the closet, opened it and popped out the VCR tape. This is a tape of tonight's events. It will become part of our divorce case. Jim said, I'm not that stupid, you can't use that tape. You took it without permission. Sally started laughing, you really are a dumb duck. We won't use it in the divorce but we'll make copies and send it to your company and to your company's home office. I'm sure they don't approve of their married employees having affairs. Jim took a couple of steps toward them when Big Louie re-entered the room. You weren't going to hurt my friends, were you Jim? Jim backed off. Well, Jim, you now have three minutes to make up your mind, and then we will be out of here, Sally stated. Rachel turned to Jim and in almost a whisper said, Jim, Sally Hawk was my husband's lawyer, and I didn't get a damn dime. She's said to be one of the best in the state. You better take that offer or you will be up the creek in a boat without a paddle. Besides, we'll lose our jobs if that tape gets in the wrong hands. Sally looked at Jim, one minute and we are out of here, see you in court. As they turned to leave, Jim yelled, wait. I'll sign it, but only if I get the tape. Carly looked at Big Louie and handed him the tape, after Sally and I walk out of here you can hand this tape to the prick. She also handed him an envelope with the promised bonus of $500. Sally repeated what she had said earlier, this document is irrevocable. If you have any questions you must contact me. You are not to bother Carly in any way or I will have you arrested and put in jail. If you understand all I have said then sign the document and I'll give you a copy along with the tape and joint credit cards. Remember Carly has 24 hours to take whatever she wants out of the apartment. Your divorce is considered a no-fault divorce and should go through within two months. Jim signed the papers and Sally gave him a copy. Then Carly and Sally both walked out the door. Shortly after we saw Big Louie hand the tape to Jim and then he walked out and joined his girls. Carly and Sally got back in the van with big grins on their faces. Carly gave me a quick kiss. Everyone seemed so happy until I heard what Sally had to say. Kevin, until the divorce is final you cannot see Carly. We can't have anyone seeing the two of you together. As long as you two aren't linked then everything should go as planned. I know that we are going to face some battles with the credit card money being taken out in the last two weeks. But our documents are on our side unless someone feels Carly is trying to defraud the banks. That is why I let Jim have his 401k. There is enough money there that the banks can go after Jim if he tries to file bankruptcy. There also is no money out there with Carly's name on it. Only the $8,000 she is to take out tomorrow. I suggest you just keep it in the same bank but only in your name. That will lessen any bank questions. Sally continued, after the divorce there should be no more problems, and the two of you can hook up if you choose. That will be up to you. Kevin, you told me that your employer asked you to go to another state and set up a brokerage firm for a couple of months. I would advise you to take it as soon as possible. Carly will be alright. I will be here to keep my eye on her. I hate to say it, but right now you are the biggest problem Carly has. Of course I can't force you to do anything, but I highly advise it. Carly was crying so I just held her. I knew what Sally had said was true. I was the only problem right now. The only weak link in the chain. I kissed Carly goodbye and told her to contact me after the divorce. I would wait for her. Sally and Carly got out of the van. Sally drove Carly home so she could get whatever items she wanted. They had picked up a U-Haul earlier in the day, so Carly could haul away whatever she wanted. Sally did say I could call her if I needed to talk or wanted to find out anything about Carly. After the girls had left I checked back on the monitor and noticed that Jim and Rachel had left. I got out and went back into the room and gathered my equipment. I grabbed my extra copy of the tape, just in case we needed it for future use. Funny no one ever questions if there's a second copy. Two cameras, two recording machines. I gathered it all up and headed for home. I was really happy for Carly and sat for me. The next day I went in and talked to my boss. I talked to him about the temporary job. I would be leaving for Chicago on Friday. I just hoped everything worked out for Carly. She truly was a wonderful person. It looked like she got a revenge. I was the only one left out in the cold. It was fun helping out Carly. I really did love her. When I arrived in Chicago, I threw myself into my work. 
We were starting a new brokerage firm and we were starting from scratch. If I wasn't working I was in my room sulking about Carly. Over the first couple of weeks I kept wondering if Carly was alright. One day I called Sally Hawk. She was glad to hear from me. She said everything was going fine. Just like they expected Jim got a lawyer and wanted to fight the decree. His lawyer told him he was barking up the wrong tree and if he wanted to go head to head against Sally, he better get a new lawyer. Jim was throwing around accusations about Carly. He said she set him up, but when it came to proof he didn't have any. Sally said she told Jim if he was going to continue accusing Carly of anything that she would take him to court. She was fed up with his whining. Sally also told me that Jim's lawyer mentioned that both Jim and Rachel had acquired syphilis. They had to go on a regimen of shots and couldn't have sex to lick cleared up. Otherwise they could acquire a new strain from each other. That brought a smile to my face. Finally Sally said that Carly moved into a nice apartment near her work. She took about half of the stuff from the old apartment to set up her new one. She was told not to talk about me for fear of someone connecting us. Of course she wasn't dating, but it had only been a couple of weeks so far. Sally did say when she was talking one on one to Carly that she really missed me, and that I was a really nice guy. I would like to say that time flew by while I was in Chicago, but it didn't. I really didn't feel a whole lot better than I did before all this revenge stuff started. At least then I was able to see Carly walk by every day. I went up to Michigan to visit my parents for Thanksgiving. I had to get away for a few days. It was nice to see family. I took my sister Christmas shopping and bought all my family members something. I stopped by a jewelry store and picked up an engagement and wedding ring for Carly, hoping that someday she would say yes. After the Thanksgiving holiday, I headed back to Chicago. I figured I'd be there about three more weeks. Being cold, windy, and lonely was all I could think about in Chicago. The city lights looked beautiful, but not when I didn't have someone to share it with. We, that's me and the new agents, got the business off the ground floor. It was doing rather well. A lot of customers, clients, if you will, came in to start investing money before the end of the year. As I arrived back in Ohio, I was greeted by my boss. He complimented me on the achievements of the new firm. From a work perspective everything was great. I just hoped my personal life would be good as well. As soon as I got back to my apartment which was two days before Christmas, I called Sally Hawk. I didn't even have a number for Carly since she moved. Sally was so glad to hear from me. She asked about the business and I told her it went well. I asked her about Carly and how the divorce was coming along. She hesitated before telling me that the divorce was final two days before. I asked her for Carly's phone number. She said she wasn't allowed to give it to me, but she would call Carly and let her know I was back in town. I thanked her and she wished me good luck. I wasn't quite sure how to feel. Carly was now divorced. I had no idea what her thoughts had been over the last few months since I left for Chicago. I had the bright idea of going over to our favorite restaurant where we met for lunch each day. I went there hoping to see her. My friend Marcia saw me and waved to me. I asked her to join me. Maybe I could learn a little something. Marcia began saying how nice it was to see me again. She had heard that I was starting up a new agency for the company in Chicago. We did all the usual chit chat and talked about the holidays that began tomorrow. She told me about her family and how nice everything was going. I asked her if Carly still worked for the company. Marcia said she did but that she and her husband had recently gotten a divorce. It happened so quickly. She stated that Carly must have taken it pretty hard because she didn't seem quite as happy now. She refused dates and spent most of her time working. Marcia said she felt sorry for her, but it was just something she had to work out herself. Everyone still loved her and hoped she would someday find the right guy. She deserved more than a cheating husband who was caught with another woman. I asked Marcia if Carly was working today. She said she was but got a call about an hour ago, and instead of eating lunch she left for the afternoon. She wouldn't be back until the following week after Christmas. I wished Marcia a Merry Christmas and asked her to say hi to her family for me. Then I got up and went home. Nothing on the answering machine. I was beginning to get a little depressed when the phone rang. I jumped up to answer it figuring it to be Carly, but it wasn't. It was another telemarketer wanting money. I just slammed the damn phone back down. I knew she had to call me about her investments. On second thought she didn't have to. We had other agents who could have updated my files for clients while I was gone. The agents and I would share any new business that was assigned to my customer base. I could call the office and see if there was any action taken on any of Carly's accounts. I quickly rang the office, but I got voicemail. 
I looked up at the clock, surprised that it was 5.12 p.m. Damn, damn, damn. The offices would be closed till Monday for the holidays. I was in the dark here on a holiday weekend. All the offices were closed. Damn it. My emotions were starting to run amok. Did I have her or did I lose her? Damn it, I needed to know something. How was I supposed to make it through this weekend not knowing anything? The phone rang again, I ran to it and answered it. It was Sally, my lawyer. She had called to inform me that she was able to get the message that I was back to Carly. Also she wanted to let me know that everything about the divorce was final. Jim couldn't file any more motions. He tried but lost them all. He had to cash in more than half his 401k to satisfy the bank credit card charges. I told Sally she was a real friend and was great to do business with. I thanked her for the information and wished her a Merry Christmas. There was a knock on the door. I opened it to find that it was Mary, my neighbor. She collected my mail and cleaned up my apartment for me while I was gone. I invited her in for a few minutes. She was a nice older woman who cleaned apartments to supplement her income. She usually cleaned mine about twice a week. She handed me my mail and gave me a tray of homemade cookies for the holidays. I asked her to wait a second because I had a gift for her also. I went in and gave her an envelope with three crisp $100 bills for Christmas. She smiled and thanked me, then she left. We needed more nice ladies like Mary in this world. She was a delightful person to be around. I was getting hungry so I called the local pizza shop and ordered me a pizza. I asked for it to be delivered. I didn't want to go out anymore tonight. I asked them to stop by the grocery store and pick me up a 12-pack of Miller Lite beer as well. That's the nice part of living in a smaller city, the so-called hometown conveniences. I decided to turn on the TV to watch the latest news and wait for my pizza to arrive. A half hour later the doorbell rang. I got up to get my pizza. When I opened the door, there stood Carly with a big smile on her face. I had tears growing in my eyes and said, I thought you were the pizza guy. She smiled, sorry to disappoint you. No pizza, just me. I pulled her into the living room and I grabbed and hugged her. God, she always felt good. I miss you Carly, I miss you terribly. It's so good to see you again. She was getting ready to say something when the doorbell rang again. I opened it and it was the pizza guy with my beer and pizza. I quickly paid him and closed the door. Then I turned back around to Carly. Are you hungry? We got pizza and beer, as I held them both up in my hands. Carly looked at me and was still smiling. You are really a funny guy, you know. I was all prepared with what I was going to say and I get here, and I can't even think straight. I have to tell you a couple of things, and then we can eat pizza while it's still hot. I know you hate cold pizza. Okay, big guy, I miss you also. In case you didn't hear it yet, I'm now a divorced woman. I just found out today that you were back. I didn't want to leave you a phone message. That would have been too tacky. I needed to talk to you in person. I left work early after Sally called me to let me know you were home. I went out to buy you kind of a Christmas present. You'll see it after we get done eating. It's not every day you splurge and buy me dinner. So let's eat. As I was getting us a couple of paper plates, I asked her what kind of a present was. She just smiled that ice smelting smile and said, you'll see. Now eat your pizza and pass me a beer. She laughed. While we ate we talked about her job and how well it was going. I told her about the agency we opened up and explained the details. Both of us skirted the big issues. They were to come shortly. After we had enough pizza, Carly looked at me and said, are you ready for your kind of a present now? I smiled and said, yep, where it is. Carly held up a little sack about the size of a small lunch bag. I'll be right back, she exclaimed. As she left the room I put the pizza and beer on the counter and went into the drawer where I kept the ring I bought for her, took it out and slipped it into my pocket. She yelled from the bedroom, are you ready? I yelled back, I think so. When she walked in, she said, I bought this kind of for you today. You get to unwrap it if you like. She was standing there in a lacy red silk bra and lacy red silk bikini panties. She even had a small lacy red silk bow in her hair. She looked at me and said, I'm no longer a married woman anymore, and I wouldn't be cheating on any husband now. If you want your present, we can go into the bedroom and you can unwrap it. I had tears streaming down my face. This is the woman I had wanted for over a year now, standing there offering herself to me. I looked at her and said, on one condition. I reached into my pocket and pulled out the ring and said, if you'll marry me. She started crying and ran up to me as I began to hug her soft warm body. 
She screamed out, yes, I'll marry you, yes, 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 God, how I have grown to love you. We must have slept quite a while. It was totally dark in the house and in the room when we woke up. It had been a long time for me since waking up next to a woman I wanted there. Carly took a shower and cleaned up while I slipped the leftover pizza into the over for a little bit. It always tasted better out of the oven. As we ate pizza we talked some more. I asked Carly when she wanted to get married. She replied that she wanted it to be as soon as possible. She didn't want to wait. By then it was about 10 p.m. in the evening. I called Sally Hawk at her house. She answered by asking, what's the matter Kevin? She must have had caller ID. I told her that Carly and I had a problem, and maybe she could help solve it seeing she was a lawyer. What is it Kevin? I'll help if I can. Carly and I want to get married as soon as possible, but tomorrow is Christmas Eve, and we need a judge to marry us. Do you know anyone? Sally started laughing. So Carly called you, did she? I'm happy for the both of you. Meet me at the courthouse tomorrow morning. We'll get your marriage license and then come to my house. You see, Mr. Hawk, my husband is a judge. I know he'll marry you. See you tomorrow at 9 a.m. sharp. The next morning Carly, who was dressed beautifully, and I, dressed in a suit, met Sally at the recorder's office. We got our license and headed over to Sally's house to get married. Her husband seemed to be a pretty nice guy for a judge. You never know what to expect with lawyers and judges, but we knew Sally was the best. Carly didn't have much family left in the area. Just a few distant cousins. So we decided to head up to Michigan and surprise my family with my new wife. To say they were happy or overjoyed would be putting it mildly. Ecstatic would be a better word. They all loved Carly. How could they not? She was definitely part of the family. Wow, Christmas turned out pretty good after all. We had to head back after Christmas. We both had jobs and now had moving to do. We decided to live in my apartment. Hers was on a month-to-month -month lease anyway. Each day after work we would move some of her stuff over to my place. It was fun doing just about everything together. The girls where she worked were so happy for her. They said the old Carly was back. Marcia was a bit shocked when she found out I was the new husband, remembering that I was a badass and very vengeful. I remember Carly telling her, don't worry Marcia. He's a puppy and I love him dearly. The big New Year's Eve bash was coming up. Most all of the successful business people from the area attended it. I asked Carly, sweetheart, want to go to the bash of the year? Our first time that everyone can see us together. I want to show you off. Besides, our ex-spouses might even be there. Carly was thinking, then looked at me and said, Kevin, I love you with all my heart, and I want everyone to know it. Yes, we will be going to the New Year's party, my dear husband. Off to the New Year's party we went. Carly looked stunning. She had on a red blouse that matched her lacy red silk bra and panties perfectly. Everyone wanted us to sit at their table. My boss and his group, Carly's friends, and even the few friends I had. Sally and Judge Hawk invited us to their table. That's where we decided to sit. I looked at Sally and told her I never saw a lawyer look that good. She looked fantastic. They introduced us to everyone else at their table. They were mostly judges and their wives, and all seemed like pretty nice people. The music was loud, but it was New Year's Eve. Carly and I got up and danced all the slow dances. Other men asked Carly to dance, but her answer was always, not this year. I only want to dance with my husband. This was our year to be together. The one exception we made was that I danced one dance with Sally, and Carly danced once with the judge. They were special friends. As we were dancing we found ourselves next to Karen, my ex-wife's sister. It just happened that we almost ran into Karen and her husband on the crowded dance floor. She looked and said, oh, my god, it's Kevin. I looked over at her and said, well, good evening, Karen, and happy new year to you. Then I said, I'd like to introduce you to my wife, Carly. Carly, this is Karen and her husband. Dot dot dot. He reached forward to shake Carly's hand and said, Bob, my name's Bob. Carly gave her patented smile and said, glad to meet you, Bob and Karen. Then Carly looked at Karen and said, didn't we meet before at Robson's restaurant on Old Route 40 about two months ago? Bob replied, no, that place is too expensive for our chase. Karen turned white and said, nice meeting you too. We have to get back to our seats. We knew she had to get back and tell Jim and Rachel that we were there. We looked over at their table. Rachel knocked over her drink when she found out I was there. We saw them turn to look at us quickly. 
We could hear Rachel say, Oh, my God, Jim, he's with your ex-wife. Jim almost fell off his chair trying to turn and look. Karen looked at Rachel and said, Rachel, he introduced her as his wife. Jim said, that son of a ditch set us up. They took us for over $100,000. Plus they set us up to get a venereal disease. How did they know everything? Rachel said, Kevin told me that someday he would get even with us. Jim said, maybe we can try taking them back to court. Karen laughed, give it up, you two. Do you guys see who they're sitting with? Sally Hawk and a half dozen judges and if that's not enough, Jim, he could kick your ass from here into tomorrow. Make no mistake, Kevin's all man, and by the looks of his wife, she's all woman. They make a great couple. It was after midnight and the crowds was beginning to thin. Sally and the judge said their good nights as well as the people at their table. So after our next dance Carly and I decided to sit in a booth not too far from Rachel, Jim and their group. Carly left for the restroom. When she came back, she looked at Jim and Rachel kind of staring at her and me out of the corner of their eyes. Carly asked me if I was ready. I looked at her and asked, ready for what? To go home, honey. No, Kevin, are you ready for your revenge? As she slipped her lacy red silk panties into my breast pocket, kind of sticking up like a hanky. Then right in front of Jim, Rachel, Karen and Bob, she unzipped my pants and pulled out my very hard cock, and while facing me, she pulled up her skirt and slid her pussy down over it, and let it sink into the hilt. Then in words loud enough for the other table to hear she said, Happy New Year, lover. Who said revenge isn't sweet? Happy New Year. Whether you wanted it or not, I'm going to give my commentary on this story. Did you notice how Kevin changed over the two parts? How he transformed from an angry, hurt, and bold guy to a soft one around the right woman. Carly didn't want to cheat on her husband, even knowing he was already cheating. The way she behaved with Kevin, how she held herself, how she became a partner in crime for him dream relationship. I like this story. And I like the way of revenge they chose. What about you? Did you like it? As usual, I try to keep the level of stories high, especially the two-part stories. Love you, family. Until next time.